which you did not. <laughs> but let me say how proud I am that um, sitting here and listening to you guys and listening to the items that you have spoken to in your declaration, it gives me confidence that the future is secure in your hands. I am truly, truly confident. Um, I am also encouraged that the young people of our continent are stepping forward boldly to say we don't want to be bystanders. We do not want to be uh, attendees of uh, conferences and ushers in places. We want to participate. We have ideas. We have suggestions. We have um, uh, uh, positions that we can, perspectives that we can present on the one single challenge that faces humanity and that threatens our future. And the young people being the greatest stakeholders of that future, you are rightly in place to make suggestions about this existential threat that affects not just our present, but also threatens our future, where you are the greatest uh, stakeholders. Um, my good girl from Lesotho has asked me, what are the, what are the things that we, we should be doing in a way that also makes sure that uh, our climate is sustainable? Let me give you maybe three perspectives. Agriculture and food production. That is a space where we not only have competitive advantage in Africa, but it is a space that we have great opportunity to create jobs, to create enterprise, and to create wealth. My good brother at the Sina will tell you that 65% of the world's arable and cultivated land is in this continent. It presents one of the biggest opportunities for us as a continent to double our cereal production, to deal with the challenge of hunger, but to also use it to drive agro-processing, value addition, manufacturing that would then create jobs for our young population in our continent. And we are very proud that of the 1.4 billion people in this continent, our median age is at 19, meaning that this continent has the largest number of young people anywhere on the globe. And these young people need jobs, people create opportunities for enterprise in, 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 in agricultural products, and also create opportunities for export. I'm just giving you one example. Second example um, is in the space around what other opportunities can we leverage in terms of um, smart cities, green development. How do we, in a very sustainable way, have settlements that do not compromise on pollution. We have huge pollution coming out of cities. We have huge uh, threats to um, polluting the air, polluting the environment that come from unsustainable settlements. It is the reason why Kenya, for example, is focused on a new model of housing that would only get almost 7 million people who live in Kenya today out of the slums into decent settlements with dignity, but would also give opportunity again to the young people to get jobs. It is our intention in Kenya, for example, to create a million jobs out of our smart housing plan. Again, it, it's, it's how do we have climate smart, climate responsive interventions, even as we solve problem of food security, even as we solve problems of unemployment, how do we do it in a way 
that respects the environment and gives us an opportunity to combine development growth together with a livable uh, globe. So that is what I would suggest going forward. I can, I can give you another two examples, but I think I'll take a lot of time. Let me leave that there. Let me come back to chicken. <laughs> My passion. And I remember Bill Gates, one of the richest people on earth said, the best way to deal with poverty is chicken farming. That's Bill Gates. Yeah, so I want you to listen to that carefully. And um, in that space, uh, you have an opportunity uh, in the, the whole farming arena. Uh, I have listened to Adesina many times, and he says the next billionaires will be billionaires around farming. You've, I've heard you say that, Adesina. Have you changed your mind? No, it's true. <laughs> it's true. He, he says he still believes it is. So that is the space that not only gives us an opportunity to have a globe that is food secure, but also creates real value, real jobs, real enterprises, and real wealth, if I may say that, real wealth. So the investments are modest. The technology is available on, uh, on, on what you need to do. The, um, the raw materials are local. And the technology, including know-how, is also local. Chicken farming is not something new. It's been here for us for decades. And the markets are also available. In fact, chicken is the cheapest source of protein. So if you're looking for the cheapest source of protein, do chicken farming. And if you're looking at sustainability, that you need to get the easiest, the cheapest route to making sure that we have the proteins to support our growth. And in any case, let me conclude by saying 25% of the world's labor force will come from the African continent by 2030. 40% of the world's workforce will come from the African continent by 2050. That world labor force has to be healthy and fed. And that is why chicken farming is central to us providing cheap proteins, healthy living for the future labor force. And that is the young people of our continent. and I will tie it up with the question.